Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's webinar. Uh, the webinar of today will talk about the potential of European standards to support the European strategy towards a green and sustainable environment. Um, you will all be new to doing uh, this webinar, so as usual, you have the possibility uh, to use the Q&A for that. My name is Els, by the way, and I'll, uh, as often, am the moderator uh, in the background of the webinar. Uh, we have a Q&A available for you for entering the questions. So the chat function is disabled for all attendees, but we do advise you to use the Q&A to enter all your questions. Uh, Senan Select are also on Twitter. We use the hashtag training for standards and we have our handle standards for you. Should you want to talk about the subject of today, please go ahead and use the hashtag. Um, I have the pleasure to uh, welcome you, of course, and provide you with the agenda of today. Uh, we have uh, a keynote speech of Mrs. Rika Hosso from DG Grow at the Commission that will open our presentations today, followed by a panel discussion with a few persons. I would like to highlight as well that there is no specific PowerPoint available for the panel discussion, so it's really uh, only having a discussion today. Uh, we have Mrs. Olivia Sachet from the DG Environment of the Commission, Solange Blazowski from Philips, and also the chair of the SABE Circular Economy Group. Uh, Mr. Stephen Fox is here uh, from the EP Group and also working at EFIC and EIB. And last but not least, Mr. Christoph Grayser, uh, working at Siemens Energy and the chair of the SVEM Group. Uh, of course, afterwards, there is some time to have a Q&A. Uh, should your question remain or reply during this webinar, we will have a report of all the questions. So I would like to invite the speakers to have a look at those questions so that we have a full Q&A report that we can provide you later. The webinar has been recorded, so we will provide you with the recorded afterwards, also with the short presentation with only the agenda, in fact. So, okay. Without further ado, I would like to open the floor to Mrs. Rika Hosu uh, for her keynote speech. I'm also switching now to her presentation. I hope you can see it. Here it is. And I'll turn off her camera. Please, uh, Rika, the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Asmi. Yeah, Thank you. The for presentation is not there yet. Sorry, Else. Okay, no, thanks for noting because the problem is always a bit that I do not see what I'm sharing, of course. Let's see. You can go straight to the first slide. This is just to a... be there now. Yeah. Fine, yes. yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Thank you for inviting me to this webinar. My name is Rika Hosso, and I'm working on the green and digital matters in DG Growth Standards Policy Unit. Uh, before we jump right into standards, a few words about the European Green Deal. Uh, as you can see, hopala. As you can see, and as you probably know know about it, uh, the Green Deal is the European Union's uh, flagship, uh, all-encompassing, overarching strategy to put the European industry and society on a more sustainable and greener path. It includes uh, almost it includes legislation covering almost all economic sectors, notably transport, energy, agriculture, industries such as steel, cement, ICT, textiles, and and what have you. Uh, it has very ambitious goals, and uh, in this respect, we are also often talking about the twin transitions. The overall goal of the pardon, of the twin transitions, which, which means uh, that digitalization is to be regarded as part of the of the process to become green and sustainable. Standards uh, will be at the heart of this new and sustainable and digital economy. Uh, this is almost clear to all of everybody, uh, to everybody. We will need standards to measure all sorts of green performance for testing, for reporting, and for the digital product passport. Next slide, please. Standards will be essential for delivering on our ambitious goals for the twin transition and equally important for the competitiveness of our industry. And that's also for the European prosperity. I think everybody agrees on this. However, the geopolitical context and the pace of standardization, standardization has changed in the, in the past and the European Union has to adapt to these changes. Uh, we cannot allow assertive countries organizations to set the line for our standards. 
We need European standards that respect our European values and that are available in time if you want to deliver on the EU's ambitious goals for a climate neutral, resilient and circular economy. These are the key messages of the new standardization strategy. And if I have to talk about one immediate success of this strategy, it is that standardization is finally getting the political attention it deserves. This attention will definitely help to mobilize funds uh, for standardization. But for this, and first of all, we need to become more strategic in the planning of standardization activities. Next slide, please. We have to prioritize and anticipate the standardization needs in order to be best prepared and we need to be prepared uh, for the work ahead and we need to act on urgencies without delay. Uh, but how, we do, how will we do this? This is the question. And this is where the standardization strategy put forward the measures. And one of, uh, one of the most important it will be the high level forum, which we are about to set up right now. And then we will do this work together of prioritization, prioritization and anticipation. The multi uh, multi it will be in a multi-stakeholder setting. Uh, it will be a commission expert group, the high-level forum. Um, there will be a call for, for expression of interest to, to select members. And uh, it will be part of them will be industry and, and member states and, and, and everybody, <coughs> uh, a, a, a broad stakeholder. Uh, a range of stakeholders. The high level forum will be instrumental in setting priorities and defining and anticipating needs. Uh, and we of course strongly recommend uh, the broader community to connect to this high level forum or take part in it, uh, but at least follow the work of what we will be doing. It is very important at this point to stress for me that we are still supporting the bottom up stakeholder driven approach. Uh, but we think that with the high level forum, we can be better connect to industry uh, processes and developments. And we believe that by working together in the high level forum, we can be more strategic and at the forefront, forefront of industrial developments, which will ultimately lead to better standards. As for urgencies, uh, this year's annual union work program already included uh, standardization urgencies that were identified by the strategy and we invited the ASOS to prepare proposals for these areas. I am thinking here about critical raw materials for batteries and waste, bat uh, waste batteries, low carbon cement and standards related to hydrogen technologies, transport, storage, etc. Um, it is of utmost importance that the system can report to these requests and should this not be possible, we need to investigate why not and work towards a solution together. In the past, uh, we were always a bit quick to blame uh, the other side uh, for the hiccups and failures, uh, but this has to change. We also don't know, you know, how to how we will. Uh, <coughs> we are <coughs> sorry. So there are we are looking forward to start a new era of collaboration with more communication and more empathy for what the other side expects. Uh, <coughs> next, please. Next slide. To facilitate this on the commission side, uh, we are setting up the excellence hub that will bring together existing standardization expertise scattered within the commission and the EU agencies and serve as a one stop stop for colleagues looking to use standards in support of legislation. It will help colleagues to effectively use standards in support of legislation and it will ensure that there is a coherent approach to standardization within the commission. This will also allow us to better coordinate and leverage uh, public support to complement the work of the ASOS. The com it, there will be a coordination and information sharing tools, which is quite important now for the commission because we have all the, all the, all the sectoral DGs basically being uh, responsible for the sectoral and technical work. And then there is DG group coordinating uh, the process. But in order to somehow improve the situation, we will have a coordination and information sharing tool uh, which will help uh, in overcoming the so-called silo mentality and to have a more holistic approach to standardization. It is absolutely necessary that we know what other colleagues are doing and what they are planning to do with standards. Uh, there will be a lot of horizontal issues uh, which we probably um, have to address as much as possible with horizontal standards. The excellence have been also involved in the anticipation exercise. Uh, so that we can start working on standardization requests already before the adoption of the legislative proposal. Uh, I think a good example of this was, was the AI proposal, the AI Act, 
uh, were already before the adoption of the legislative act, we, are, we, are start, uh, we were working together on a standardization request so that the community can be prepared and, and knows more or less what is coming. Of course, with the disclaimer that there will be some changes after the adoption. At this point, I think I have to stress, uh, because we hear many times that, that we do not intend to take over the role of the standardizers through the excellence hub. So this, it is just an internal commission coordinating uh, loose community, let's say, we do not intend to redraft the harmonized standards currently cited in the official zone. <laughs> the, the, the fallback option with, with, with the, the commission in implementing decisions uh, and, the, and the common technical specifications as mentioned in the, in, the, in the strategy are really just a fallback option. So what we are interested in, this is a very key message here, uh, is to improve the European standardization and the way we work together. Uh, with the SOS so that we do not have to use this fallback option of implementing acts. Um, yes, as you can see, we have done quite a lot of work in setting up new structures internally for the immense work that is ahead of us. Uh, and uh, I think actually you have probably the same uh, similar challenges uh, as regards coordination, silo mentality and sharing of information as, as we have. And, and probably you would also profit of, 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 of the work that we will be doing in the Excellence Hub, but because you also have to anticipate what uh, the commission is coming up with. So I think this will be a clear win situation and we should be able to improve the communication uh, between the ESOs and the commission, which I think is key in, 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 our, in our journey, what is ahead of us. And this is in our mutual interest to do so. So the will be the first task we have to do together is the revision of existing standards uh, as, their ability, as regards their ability to support the goals of the European Green Deal and to map the, the need for new ones. This means a lot of work, this we all know. And as far as I'm aware, in the, uh, you already started with this work, which is very much welcome. Uh, uh, from our side, I think the GRC is also doing some preliminary work in this regard, mostly focusing on climate-related aspects at the moment. Uh, DG Grow actually is, 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 is could coordinate a little bit between that we are not duplicating the work between within GRC and CCMC. So we are glad to hear you know proposals how we could do this together. There is also the international level where there's a similar skilling exercise is taking place under the London agreement. Uh, we have to also have an eye on this and also ensure that you know we are not doing the same work. So this, this is more, more on your side, I'm just mentioning it. And uh, last but not least, not least to make things even more complicated is ICT standardization in support of circular economy, which just talked that the twin trans as, a, as twin transitions are always mentioned everywhere, which where, uh, we, where we understand that the uh, ICT standardization, ICT standards can actually, and ICT itself can enable more circular business processes and can be an enabler for the greening of our economies. So this makes the situation actually, uh, oh, next slide, please. Sorry, I, I think I forgot the slide. Yes, so here you go. The, about the urgencies, I was just talking that we have a lot of work together, we would like to, avoid duplication of work. The commission is happy to coordinate between GSC and CCMC and, and, and the work. And, um, and I was talking about ICT standardization, which makes the thing even more complicated because as we know that ICT standardization is more, uh, happening more in, in Ford and consortia and the, the, the strategy actually was uh, putting also an emphasis on, on, on how to strengthen our, our, our presence in this foreign consortium and international standardization. We could not talk about this a lot, I think. Uh, I, I do not wish to part, uh, talk about this part. So how we strengthen our, our role, the European role in, in, in international fora, because, because I think for now, for us, for the green standards, it's more, more we should, we should con concentrate on the production side of standards and uh, on, 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 on the European standards. So I leave that, that part of, the, of, of, of how, how the strategy is, is, is aiming uh, to, to, to strengthen our presence in international standardization. But to sum it up, much can be, much could be achieved by simply putting to the, together our assets in a coordinated and strategic manner. 
which we have done too little in the past, and we need the involvement of, and the input of industries to be successful to be successful as well. We believe the Commission believes that with the high level forum and the thief standardization officer who will be actually the, the relay and the, the, the contact between the political and the, and the technical level of standardization, with the political goals and the technical level of standardization, and with the Excellence Hub, which will be the coordination, coordination mechanism, we have laid the foundation uh, for, for, for success. And uh, all what I can do is to encourage you to also take a proactive approach in preparing for the task ahead. What I can say is that the commission counts on the broader stakeholder community to find the best and most effective ways. And uh, we are counting on you to come up with uh, proactive approaches, how we could actually proactive uh, ideas, uh, proactively with ideas, uh, how we could make this journey a successful journey. Thank you very much. I would not take, you know, like time from the panelists. I'm waiting. I'm, 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 I'm happy to take questions later. Yes, thank you, Rika. There are indeed a few questions for you already in the Q&A panel. Uh, I see that Ronald, who is the chair of SABE, popped up. I would like to maybe invite him to, to, to address the questions. Yes, uh, Reka, thank you very much for your very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, it's great to hear that uh, there is already a success that uh, standardization gets uh, more attention and the attention it, uh, it deserves. Um, maybe it's good to have a look at, at the questions, see if you can respond them by mail. At the end of the webinar, we will have a general questions and answers session. Uh, so some of the questions addressed to you will be uh, addressed then. But allow me to ask you one question. You said in your presentation that suggestions are welcome. Uh, could you indicate how those suggestions can be canalized to the right place and in, in which area you uh, prefer the suggestions? I think it, the best is if you write an email to me because now I will be actually setting. I'm 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 the main contact person for the for the excellence hub. So it is my task to 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 work this out. It's it's everything in the making right now. So yeah, just like you, uh, it's new for us as well because uh, this 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 huge coordination work. So I think if we get the answers, uh, we get your questions to me, then 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 we will we will take it from here. And also from my side, this is the same thing that I will also have to have somebody, you know, we cannot, we, we really would like to improve communication, but obviously we have to together figure it out how this will go, you know, without creating potentially chaos and, and, and side channels. So from the commission side, it will be for, the, for, for, for now me. Okay. Who answers to these questions and tries to channel it to the right uh, the sectoral units. Okay, thank you very much. So we will share your contact details. The good news is we have 220 participants, 400 registrations, and uh, you all listen uh, the right moment because uh, the Excellence Hub is still in the making. So your ideas are more than welcome and share them with, uh, with Reka. Um, well, this webinar starts from the idea that the EU has a clear expectation that the EU Green Deal will be systematically supported by suitable standardization activities. Um, as Popular said, um, the Green Deal and standardization are friends. Uh, they are connected in the, in the latest policy documents from the European Commission and Sen and Senelec. Reka has uh, shared with us already how standardization uh, is addressed by, by the new standardization strategy of the European Commission, but also recently the Sen and Senelec strategy 2030 was published with a mission to building a safer, more sustainable and competitive Europe through European and international standardization. And the main focus of the Sen and Senelec strategy is on the Green Deal and digital transformation. So as said, uh, standardization and the Green Deal are becoming friends and we would like to discuss uh, with the panel how they can become better friends. So um, we are delighted to have a high level panel with Solange Blaskowski. She is Director Standardization Environment at Philips. She's also the chairperson of the Saba Circular Economy Group. She represents industry 
and her expertise is on circular economy. Second, Thank you. We have Olivia Chassi. Oh, Chassi, let me first introduce so, the panel. No, I understood that. Yes. Sorry, apologies. She is, she is a policy offer at the European Commission of DG Environment, and her expertise is in circular economy. Um, we are delighted also to have Stephen Fox. He is managing partner at the EP Group, and he represents uh, the financial institutions, the European financial institutions, and his expertise is in sustainable financing. And last but not least, we have Christopher Grazer. He is senior key expert product safety, technical regulation and standards at Siemens Energy and chairperson of the sector forum of energy management. He represents industry and um, his expertise is in energy technologies. So Solange, uh, I would like first to give the word to you. You have five minutes. Um, the topic is broad, so please be concrete and, and share your thoughts, how we can better connect standardization in support of the Green Deal. And please include some uh, a call for action for the, for the participants. Okay, thank you, Ronald. And um, first of all, thank you all for uh, the organizers for, for uh, inviting me to this panel. So my, my link is circular economy, my link is industry. Achieving a circular economy has been one of the key objectives of the European Green Deal. And, and however, circular economy, just like climate neutrality today, is not a very simple concept. And, and there is much discussion about it today. So although the knowledge is increasing, we, the business are still not yet fully confident of their understanding of circular economy. And, and one of the biggest misconceptions is that circular economy is all about recycling. So industry and governments really need simple, trusted, consensus-based framework that can deliver practical and yet common approaches to solving complex problems such as circular economy. And standards are the answer to that need. So they help companies to implement best practices. They support with measurement, with assessments. They give guidance. And, and they can even help organizations to understand what type of claims they can make without the fear of, of being accused of greenwashing, for example. So in, in my view, it's been extremely challenging to work on a worldwide international standard for circular economy currently because, of the diff because different regions in the world seem to have different uh, opinions of circular economy is. And, and finding consensus is being, is being very, very hard. And I guess this is an advantage we do have here in Europe. And, and this brings Sanselec standards at the center of enabling a circular economy. So policies, legislations on, on efficient use of our resources, whether it's energy or whether it's materials, are, are far ahead in Europe than they are in most of the other uh, regions of the world. And, and this makes our task to develop European standards in support of material and resource efficiency and, and so supporting the whole uh, circular economy much, much easier. And, and I think we should make use of this advantage, creating European standards that later could be brought to the international air arena, uh, making use, for example, of collaboration agreements like Vienna and, and Frankfurt agreement. So many years ago in Europe, we started with standards addressing energy efficiency. And in the last years in Sen and Senelec, we were the first in the whole world to work extensively in the development of standards covering material efficiency. So material efficiency is, in my view, an essential part of the circular economy. The name says it, it's about the efficient application, the efficient use, but also the preservation of materials through reuse. So material efficiency favor design strategies where products are given longer life and, and use at le the least amount of natural resources. It, it also favors strategies where products can be easily repaired, can be given a second or a third life, like refurbishing, for example. And, and although recycling, like I said earlier, is important, as products cannot last forever, 
we sh the, the, the recycling should be applied only when all the re all the strategies, all the reuse strategies have been already applied. So material efficiency does not favor strategies where the materials are lost, like for example, incineration and landfilling. So we all inherited a wonderful earth. But today, we don't know for sure this will be the same with, the, with our grandchildren or with our grand-grandchildren. So I guess we need to ask ourselves how each of us can contribute and, and be more responsible about our footprint on the Earth's resources. So my two cents recommendation is that we can leave, um, we cannot leave only to our governments to find a solution. We cannot wait for the European Commission to decide which standards are to be developed in support of efficient use of our natural resources. We need to be proactive. And, and to conclude, I want to give a concrete, concrete example about a standard that is being developed within Sensana like JTC-10 and, and that I'm especially proud of because it was initiated by my company, by Philips. So the Circular Economy Action Plan shows that 80% of the waste, whether a product can or cannot be repaired, refurbished, recycled, that will be determined by the way such a product is designed. And although there, is, uh, there was no standardization request, we had consensus that this topic was very important for industry and we needed guidance, we needed alignment on such a topic. So with the support of many uh, European organizations, early this year, a JTC-10 started development of, of an horizontal standard on circular uh, product design. And, and I guess this is a way of being proactive. This is a way to achieve our goals. Thank you. How we can better connect standardization in support of the Green Deal and you uh, we, we expect you to do this from the from the expertise of sustainable financing. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. I'd just like to um, make one correction. For some reason, my affiliation included a reference to the EIB, but I have no affiliation with the EIB. So just to get that on the record. Um, so I am the co-lead of the Energy Efficiency Financial Institutions Group Working Group on Energy Efficiency First. And a key priority of the Green Deal is to prioritize energy efficiency. And what does that mean? That means pushing investment away from energy supply into energy efficiency, and also making sure that energy efficient options, energy efficiency options are considered as opposed to energy supply options, and also making sure that all investments incorporate the optimum, the cost effective level of energy efficiency performance. And at the moment, they don't. Every day, even as we're speaking, there are investment committees and lending committees across Europe making decisions on investments that are just missing out on cost-effective energy efficiency options, let alone not cost-effective, just missing out on cost-effective energy efficiency options. And there are lots of reasons why that's happening. You know, there are lots of um, problems assessing energy efficiency options. They, they tend not to be put forward um, because people put forward conventional solutions that don't include all of the energy efficiency options. And also, if you're a, an investment committee in a financial institution, by the time the project gets to you, it's already been developed and you don't really see a parallel alternative option that is more energy efficient. So we have to look at how to overcome those issues. And the Energy Efficiency Financial Institutions Group Working Group on Energy Efficiency First is doing exactly that. Now, Energy Efficiency First is the... EC policy, um, but how do we actually operationalize it within financial institutions? That's the real question. And the commission issued guidance in September, but it was very high level guidance. And the EFIG working group is, is working to kind of put more detail on that and help financial institutions operationalize it. So where do standards come into that? 
I think there are a number of areas, particularly standards of um, processes and templates of documents, but there's one particular one that I really want to focus on, and it's been highlighted by a number of financial institutions. When they're looking at an investment or a lending decision on a building, how can they have a standardized way of looking at what the path to achieving net zero is for that building. And this is important because you can have an energy audit, but that doesn't really set out the path and the cost effectiveness of getting to net zero. And it's important for the financial institution to understand that path because that's a measure of its risk that it's taking, the risk of a stranded asset, and the risk that it needs to invest more money to put that building onto a net zero path. And it also it has duty of care implications because if the building is being leased out or rented by somebody, then the institution has a duty of care to the tenants. So this one particular issue of one particular set of standards that would be really useful to financial institutions is how do you set out a net zero path what the technical measures are and what the economics are and what the scheduling of that kind of transition to net zero is. So that's the one particular one that I really want to focus on. And really, EFIG and, and other people and the financial institutions are really open to cooperating with anybody who wants to contribute to developing that kind of standard. So that's, that's what I have to say this morning. Happy to answer questions later. Thank you. Stephen, thank you very much. That's a very clear example. I think uh, standardization uh, can work on. Uh, I think there's already some work going on on energy efficiency at buildings. So uh, the requirements uh, seem to be even a little bit more uh, specific, uh, but a very interesting topic. I would like to give the floor to Christoph. Uh, he uh, represents industry and uh, he is very happy to share his ideas about energy technologies and the link with uh, with standardization. Thank you very much, Ronald. And uh, now, as I'm the, probably the last on the panel, I have it a little bit easier because I can simply build on many things that have already been said by the previous speakers. Um, yeah, technology. So what we see today is that we have uh, quite a lot of emerging new technologies and also for the development of mature technologies, which are ongoing. Much of them are uh, being based on standards and standards are developed in pretty much the traditional way. The problem is giving the increasing complexity especially of our energy supply systems or, and the integration of the systems, might it be electricity, heating, cooling, gas, water, and whatever, all of them are, um, are more and more integrating and interacting with each other. And now I get back to one point that Reika made is that, well, in the commissioning, they are taking a lot of efforts in getting out of their silos. And you could, those energy technologies, for example, you could even see them as kind of silos. Each of them um, are working on making them very mature and also very sophisticated. But what I'm seeing is, especially in standardization, is that to a very large extent, the interoperability of those systems is to some extent, sorry to say it's so bluntly neglected. And this is essentially a point that needs to be addressed. And with that in mind, it is obviously the energy technologies, the emerging energy technologies, it could be renewable energies, it could be hydrogen technologies, it could be grid technologies, it could be also the commercial and, trans, um, and, and, and technical transactions with all their complexity probably being based on some sort of blockchain technologies. We have pilot projects, we have silos next to each other, but, the, but they need and where I also see it is something where standardization simply cannot just stay 
on the um, yes, you could say at the working level, it, had to, it has to be brought to the boardroom in order to enable this more holistic approach. And this is something which I think can be perfectly integrated also with the new standardizations of the European Commission. And please, to all of you, think about that. Think seriously about that and how you will want to, in, uh, to implement this in your respective environments. What can you do to maybe take that holistic view on what you're currently doing be in your respective industry federations or whatever your affiliation is and what your connection is. I think this is really the most important thing, how we can bring things together and how standardization can really systematically support. Um, also, the European Green, Green Deal, which as we have seen is a very complex, um, 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 a very complex system integrating a lot of different aspects. And this is also where we have to follow up and where we have to improve. And maybe my last sentence is what we can see is no one of us has the recipe at hand how to do this and tell it to all the rest of the world. We're currently living in a phase of mutual uncertainty. And as Reka said in her keynote, I think we have to enable a and allow a regular communication really on the same height between all the participants, take standardization as a strategic option for acting on that. And yes, and that's essentially what I have to say. And what we are trying also, especially to include and also to implement in SFAM. And I think it's likewise the same in Saba. And Think about this and also you may also have a need to change your mindset because if people do not change their mindsets, their behavior, we can put in place rules, whatever we want, legislation, but also standardization, they won't be successful if they are not accepted by people, which definitely is one of the points why in SFAM we are also talking about this very important questions about how you could also um, yes, um, promote changing of the mindset of people, changing the behavior, because otherwise all the future standards won't do any good. Okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Christoph, thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your, uh, your thoughts. Um, we have 50 minutes left for questions and answers. Uh, some of the questions have been coming uh, through uh, the questions and answers session. So I would like to give the floor to Bernard and Etore to uh, address the questions to, uh, to Reka, the keynote speaker and, uh, and the panel. Okay, this is uh, Etore speaking. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm trying to summarize uh, uh, a few questions that are uh, touching the same subject. Uh, indeed, uh, there is a request of uh, wider and broader participation. How can stakeholders participate in this new standard development? And let me uh, uh, complete a little bit more. From, from all the presentation, it appears that the Green Deal requires a, a more holistic approach that we used in the past, since we need to merge different topics, uh, technical assistance, because we need the, uh, the Green Deal is touching on certain products, but not them all. Uh, we need to, as we said from, we heard from uh, uh, Stephen, uh, there is a need of financing all these uh, activities. So we need accounting procedures and we need to operationalize the energy efficiency first pro uh, uh, projects. We need to report uh, and assess uh, from various companies what they are doing in the market. In a nutshell, there is a broader range of stakeholders that uh, need to come together to harmonize all the whole process. Uh, the, the final objective, of course, is we need to find a solution that scale, uh, scale up and make an impact on the substitution of the fossil fuels with something that is renewable. This is requiring a lot of, uh, of efforts and uh, 
is it the proposal of ECA to have a high level group of studying and analyzing all these options to make it and to put them to together and prioritizing the solution? So can the panelists support and comment this statement? So first, we would like to have a reaction from Reka on this question. Um, yeah. So how to involve uh, more stakeholders to the, to, and why we think that stakeholder involvement is important? I didn't get the question at all, I'm sorry, properly. <laughs> Just what, yeah. what is, how, how can we get this? Uh, um, stakeholders involved is it the route through the uh, ah. cross standardization body yeah, absolutely. part of this high level group on standard development uh, that will set priorities for the community? yes uh, the high yeah yeah no i get it now i get it okay we are talking about two two levels the one is the political level which is more the high level forms there we would like to have you know industry on a high level so that the strategy st strategy is set, you know, where we go, what kind of technologies we need to deploy. And then, you know, obviously the ASOS have to follow it or, or will be part of the high level forum. And then we have to translate this, you know, to the technical level and get the, uh, the standardization industry down there and TC level to work uh, on it. And now this is how we think that if we get, you know, a political traction, then this will, you know, unite the industry more easily to a consensus, you know, and then agree and deliver the standards. But uh, and, and the involvement, you know, everybody can because it will be associations mostly. So there will be industry associations, stakeholder associations, societal associations uh, uh, involved uh, in order to, you know, represent all the interests in the high level forum. And everybody can get in touch with these associations uh, and, and, and be in contact with us. And, and obviously those who are more interested in the, in the, in the technical level, they, they go to the standardization bodies <coughs> and bring in their expertise there. The, well, the good thing on the high level forum is really that the political attention is not there, I think. So it will be easier to also to get funds uh, for this. It will be easier to anticipate for us, you know, for, for example, budgetary wise, you know, if, if, if we know where we go, we can also plan, you know, a budget next year so that we are not, not have facing situations like like this year or last year that it's completely oversubscribed by budget and even if we wanted to 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 to, to uh, issue mandates it was there was or, or or expect proposals there was no money so this is the this is the principle behind it this overall planning you know that we everybody sees where we are going and, and what we need to do and then everybody can actually you know like put the resources there what is needed so the the answer is we need to be proactive through our industry association or uh, and the way we are represented and then to get uh, in contact with the high level forum to get visibility in our voice represented there. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. It's all, I see that Christoph raised his hand. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ronald. A very brief uh, addition to what Reka has just explained. Um, I think it is also important to make sure that standardization organizations make themselves more visible also to all the stakeholders, because sometimes my feeling is like that we have a lot of public discussion uh, around all the topics which are currently in our, um, uh, we, are, we are currently talking about here, could be energy related about circular economy, all those things, but my feeling is sometimes that standardization organizations, European standardization organizations are sometimes not perceived as a serious stakeholder or as an option to act. And I think that has to be somehow may, uh, be made more visible. And I see also a particular responsibility of bodies, maybe like the Sector Forum Energy Management or also Saba, which are also more overarching bodies to enable this. But that definitely requires a much more coordinated um, um, communication also between standardization and stakeholders, and especially also between the commission and the stakeholders. So I think there is quite some, uh, some room for improvement also on this. And again, all the others, 
everyone who is sitting in the audience today should seriously consider standardization as a strategic option for activity. Okay, thank you. Ettore, next question from the audience. Yeah, maybe I can do, I can do it. Uh, Bernard, Bernard, yes. Speaking. yes, okay, we, we had a question about um, how would standards in the, the field we are talking today um, take into account or relate to the EU taxonomy and regulation, because that will be all something very important, and notably to the technical screening criteria as adopted or to be adopted in the delega delegated act. So it's probably a question to our colleagues from the Commission again. Yes, maybe Olivia, you can say something about this, or or Stephen. I guess the taxonomy is also in your in your side of activities. Maybe first, Olivia. Um, um, regarding taxonomy, that's not really in the remit of my of my work. Um, so I would prefer maybe uh, someone else um, uh -huh. starting with an answer. Thank you very much. Stephen? Sure, I think um, even within the taxonomy, there's still um, some uncertainty and some need for standardization about, and the financial institutions are wrestling with applying the taxonomy. It's clearly a major focus of their attention at the moment, um, but out of the taxonomy, standardized standards about measuring energy performance and, and things like that will be important because they have to refer to those standards or it will become easier if they can refer to standards. So I think that's the issues with the taxonomy. Yeah, if I may add on, on this topic, uh, <clears throat> of course, since all these initiatives will have to be financed and supported for their implementation, uh, it's important in, in this high level forum, uh, there will be uh, only and also financial institution part of the discussions, uh, because then we will, uh, we will integrate better probably the technical requirements of uh, what we are trying to achieve with uh, the financing requirements and this is coming into place the taxonomy that is bringing us to the sustainable finance. And since uh, as part of the taxonomy, we have the. Uh, I, I see a uh, uh, yes, sorry. Oh, I see a hand raised by Reka. Okay. Yeah. So we go to the next and last question. Yes, just here with the high level forum. Yes, absolutely. I, I think I forgot to tell you before when I was talking that the high level forum will be very high level, but there will be subgroups. So as soon as we have a topic, for example, for sure there will be a circular economy, for sure there will be an ICT subgroup, you know, and this will have a different cause because this is the rule, the commission rule for expert groups. So, so there, you know, individual organizations also can come in with their uh, specific expertise and also the taxonomy issue. I'm also not very much involved in it, but I'm, I know that FISMA colleagues are working on, on, on something in this respect. So we, we, are, we are working, it's, uh, it's, it's known that there is some standardization needed there. That's all I can say because this is exactly what we were talking about, silo mentality and also what Olivia said that I cannot know just because I'm working in growth with the green and digital matters, I don't know with every sector by heart what they are knowing, what they are doing. But this is what we try to involve with the excellence of. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. A space for one more question to the panel. Maybe if I can iterate just quickly, uh, I think we had a question about uh, the uh, interest from the financial institutions regarding uh, blockchain and DLT in the on, on special context. I just wrote in, in, in the answer that we have at the uh, sector from energy management, energy transition level, uh, launched a working group dedicated to these activities uh, with some mapping. So at the end, I, I would encourage everyone interested uh, to, to join if, uh, if, if needed. Uh, so please do not hesitate. But if there is a question, uh, please, at the next one. Okay. Maybe uh, I'd like to give the, the floor to, uh, uh, to Solange, if he can comment or provide a few comments on the material efficiency and how, uh, what is the thinking process to include 
uh, not only in Europe, but also the rest of the world as it was coming up from seeing this person. I guess we cannot operate in a silo. I mean, uh, although we can have, a, a, we have a, a easier way to find consensus, we still need to engage the rest of the world. After all, companies, they produce locally, but they, uh, and, and, and they produce, uh, sometimes they, uh, quite often they, they operate on a global level. So um, this needs to happen at global level. I believe that that question, there was also a portion uh, dedicated to the European Commission um, uh, because uh, European uh, standardization is close to European partners, although we can have um, a liaison from other organizations uh, outside Europe, to my knowledge. So that involvement could be possible uh, through uh, liaison organizations. And, and it's very important that we do include the, the knowledge and, um, and the, the, the needs from organizations outside Europe when we are developing standards in Europe as well. So. Okay. Th thank you very much for the answer. Um, we're coming to, at the end of this uh, webinar. I would like to uh, thank Reka for her keynote speech and all the panelists for their sharing their interesting uh, thoughts. Um, as we know, uh, Rome wasn't built in one day. So today uh, we have been touching on some issues, how we can better connect standardization uh, to support the Green Deal. Um, words I've heard a lot is uh, silos. We have to get away from the silo thinking uh, the approach should be more horizontal uh, and there should be a holistic approach. So I think that that are some uh, suggestions for, for change in, uh, in the road that we have ahead to, uh, to reach Rome. Uh, there are many ways to Rome. Uh, standardization should be one of those roads uh, to reach our, our destination, uh, a sustainable and green uh, Europe uh, in which Europe is, is in the lead. Um, many thoughts have been uh, shared, and I would say to the audience, um, although the European Commission has a lot of initiatives, uh, we shouldn't wait, uh, as Solange already said, we have to be proactive. So if you want to become uh, proactive, there are also many ways to become proactive, but one of the ways is to get connected to SABE or uh, the Sector Forum on Energy Management or uh, to CCMC. You will have the contact details uh, in front of you. So please, if, if you want to get uh, more involved, uh, contact us and, and uh, we start sharing, uh, paving the road to the standards in support of the, of the Green Deal. With this, I would like to uh, thank all, uh, also all the uh, participants of this webinar. And uh, we foresee uh, more is coming up, uh, more specific topics. Uh, but we wanted to kick off this, uh, this, this line of activities with a more general approach. So all of you, thank you very much for your uh, participation. And I wish you a very uh, nice day and week ahead. And we meet in the future.